Guys, today is a pretty special day. What we have here is a gorgeous BMW E38 7 Series. This was in production from 1994 to 2001. And if you know your 7 Series E38, they got a nice facelift in, uh, I think it was in 1999 or in 2000. And if you look at this, you can see that this is definitely not 100% stock. This is a Dynan modified 7 Series, and I absolutely love these exhausts in the back. So what we're going to do in this video is talk about some of the spec and tech for the BMW 740, and then talk about this design, because when I look at this, it kind of makes me wonder what happened to BMW. Massive thanks to Max and Andre from M-Town Colorado and European Auto House here in Denver for letting me get my hands on this absolute legend of a car. Go and check out their inventory. They have some really unique cars, especially if like me, you love proper Euro cars from the golden era. I'll link to their shop down below in the description. So some facts about the E38. It was the first BMW or a car available with curtain airbags. It was also the first European car that had navigation, satellite navigation and built-in TV in the car, which is pretty cool. It was also the first BMW 7 Series with a diesel option which didn't make it over here to the US. Here in the US, we got the 740i and the IL, and then we also got the V12 750. And the E38 was also the last to be available with a manual transmission. So you could get the 740 with a six-speed manual transmission. The lower trims you could get with a five-speed manual. So talking about the power, the 740 came with a 4.4 liter naturally aspirated V8. And it put out 282 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque. If you stepped it up to the V12, you got 326 horsepower. From 0 to 60, the 740 did that in about 8 seconds and the 750 bumped it down to about 6.5 seconds. Not fast by today's standards, but again, that's not really what the E30 is about. The E38 is all about the design. So what I think about this design is specifically looking at it like this from a side view, it's probably one of the best looking sedans of all times. And it's definitely, in my opinion, the best looking BMW saloon car they've ever made. And the thing is, this was designed by Boyke Boyer, and he had been with BMW for about 30 years and didn't really have any cool designs to his name. He also designed the uh, BMW E36. So imagine that, you're, you're with BMW for 30 years. Sweet. And then at the end of your career, you get to design the E38. He just sketched it down and I guess the management of BMW at the time gave it the green light so that and then the other cool thing is if you google his name you can't really find a lot of information about him and I think that just makes it even cooler because he was really humble with essentially designing one of the top three best looking sedans in the world. Now, as you can see this is the um, short wheelbase so you have the 740i and the 740i L. The uh, L extends this section of the car you have the rear doors by about five inches Proportionally, I definitely prefer the 740i over the IEL just because the roofline and the greenhouse look more natural. And this feels like a, a, a almost like a sports car when you look at it. What I love about the proportions is if you look at the front end and the hood and how low it sits, it feels like you can barely fit the springs above the tires up to the line of the of the hood. And compare this, for example, to, uh, to today's 7 Series, which is a lot beefier, but I don't really mind the proportions of the new 7 Series because it still has some of the lines of the E38. However, the front end sits a lot higher. It doesn't have this shark looking design to it. And of course, my biggest issue with the new 7 Series is specifically the front end graphics. I think it gets way too busy with the big kidneys and then you have the split headlights as well. But here, this is proper BMW from I would say the golden era of BMW design. You have the E39, you have the uh, E46. Actually, it came out in 96, so that was the same era of BMW. And you also have the first generation BMW X5 of the time. So definitely, in my opinion, 
the best era for BMW design. Now let's go into some of the details and this is obviously the 2001. So this is the last year when BMW was making the E38 and this is obviously the facelifted version. So the changes they made for the facelift are very subtle but they're still super effective. So we have these headlights here, for example, you see that it dips down instead of going down here and going straight like we have on the pre-facelift. These kidneys are now in chrome instead of being black. And going down to the side, we have these side skirts that are colored and stretches all the way across both axles. And in the rear, you have these clear taillights and the stock 740 and the E38 facelift also came with a chrome uh, trim piece that went here. It's not here on this Dynan version. Now at the bottom we have, of course, <laughs> these are not the stock exhaust. Uh, the owner actually told me that this is uh, exhaust from the E60 M5. Usually when it comes to the E38, I prefer to have a clean uh, cut for the rear. But in this case, I think it actually works to have them exposed like this. It adds to the overall sportiness, specifically since we have these aftermarket wheels on it as well. We talked about the exterior, let's jump in to the interior and let me talk you through the quality of BMW's interiors of this era. I really love everything about these cars and this era of BMW. Not just the exterior, but also the interiors. It, everything in here feels proper and it feels solid. All the buttons has a nice touch to it still. What is it? 25 years almost later. And on top of that, in this specific 7 Series, we have this gorgeous M steering wheel that I don't think came standard with the E38. It does, however, look very good. This feels like an E39 m5 steering wheel pretty sure that's what it is on the side here you have your uh, controls for the stereo and just listen to this sound it just feels very solid still to control these and on the side here you have the controls for the um, cruise control and in the middle this is what i'm talking about this is the first car ever to be fitted with an in or built-in TV. You also have built-in navigation on this car. The thing is with the upgrade, with the facelift in 2001, they changed the navigation out from CD to DVD, which means that it made it a whole lot easier to travel specifically around Europe because all the maps for Europe was fitted on a single DVD. So that means that you didn't have to go in the back or, or switch here the CDs every time you cross, you know, a section where the maps and for one CD. Another detail I love about this generation, just the, the gauge cluster. It's a simple design, exactly what I want. And then you have this beautiful housing for the gauge cluster. And in addition to this center console that is in typical BMW fashion, angled just a little bit towards the driver. And down here we have the ashtray as you can see, and it pops up by hitting this button so you can take it out and empty it if you want to. And just look at this cup holder integration here. You click this and out comes the cup holder in a very smooth and very quality way. And I can't believe everything works so well still to this day. So compare this, for example, to the interiors of uh, new BMWs, where I feel I've said this so many times before, it feels like they've taken away all the, all the identity of the cars today and strip everything down nothing has any more personality and what i love about old interiors like this is that every single piece is mechanical and every single piece feels like they put in a lot of effort to design every single experience you have with these buttons for example and the uh, the graphics and the fitment these beautiful pieces here trim pieces fitting really nicely looking at the seats I'm not sure if these are the stock seats i think Maybe they are, they look very sporty because we have some serious bolstering here on the sides, looking super clean. And in the back seat, as this is the 740, not the 740 IL, it feels like you still have a lot of space here. If I sit behind myself in a driver position, I'm about 6'1 or so, I still have plenty of leg room back here. I wanna show you a cool detail right here in the trunk as well. So you have, you open the trunk with this button and then it's motorized, so it's soft close and it's uh, just open, it opens it for you. And then when you close it, you just have to put it down 
like that and it closes automatically super clean design and just look at the line flow of the beautiful shoulder line that we have going through the uh the door handles then continues into the top part and creating the reverse and the indicator lights in the rear end and then cutting through the deck lid or the the trunk and of course going back all the way to the other side continuing through this line going in fades into this fender because it sits so low in the front end and then connects with the front headlights it's an absolutely gorgeous design the e38 uh 7 series we just got this e30 um coupe with a v8 underneath this is of course one generation before the e38 and i still think these cars are just they have more uh BMW-ness in them. They have more BMW identity or DNA in them. Today, I feel like it's slowly being faded away. And this is just a clean example of uh, what you can do when you have an E30 uh, coupe. If you want to put a V8 in them and just look at how the wheels and tires stick out further than the body, it looks pretty sick. And this wing is nice too. I think it's adjustable. These are also going up in value. And I think for a good reason, because I think honestly, people, Specifically BMW enthusiasts, I don't think they want to go into too much of an automated driving experience. And if you don't want that, you kind of have to go back in time a little bit. For example, to, for, to the E38 uh, 7 Series or the E30 um, uh, 3 Series right here. These are very analog cars and they definitely give you that engagement that's missing, in my opinion, in a lot of modern cars today. So one modification I would definitely do if I had a 4.4 liter natural, naturally aspirated V8, I think it would actually add a sport exhaust like we have here because it sounds so good. And why wouldn't you want to take advantage of the beautiful engine that we have up front and really have that proper noise? And there's no noise. There is no noise pumped in to the cabin like we have on modern BMWs. This is proper mechanical noise and I absolutely love the old school feel of it. All right guys, we talked about the exterior, we talked about the interior and now it's time for the fun part to take this for a drive and see how it drives compared to modern cars. I can pretty much tell you already that I think I'm gonna prefer this more analog feel to it. And this exhaust just sounds absolutely fantastic. As I said, if I was getting a 740 with a V8, uh, after hearing this car, we'll probably upgrade the exhaust. Steering feels nice and heavy, just like you want in a car like this. When this came out, it uh, the previous generation 7 series before this really didn't have a lot of competition. But then as you know, Audi came along with the Audi A8, which to me also is a very good looking sedan. However, it feels a lot more rounded and they have the, uh, the space frame, which was all alum aluminum in the frame of the Audis. Um, but to me, this is still by far the best looking of the Mercedes, the Lexus LS. And then you have the, of course, the Audi A8 as well. This and then the A8. This feels more sharp. It feels like a shark in the front end. And I forgot to show you, I'm gonna film it in the, in the back. There's one detail on the trunk that I love about this design that kind of shows that the designers had the intention of cutting clearly the, the, the end point. And on, a, on the Audi in, in that same section, it's very rounded, but on the 7 Series, the E38, it has a almost like a tiny little ducktail on the trunk, which is a detail that probably not a lot of people notices. But it's one of these details that I think shows the designer's intent to um, really cut that off in a very proper way. It feels super comfortable. It almost feels like a brand new car. It doesn't have the same ride quality, of course, as a brand new 7 Series. But that's the thing. Do you want an analog experience or do you wanna feel like you're sitting inside of a simulator and driving a car? To me, I'm always gonna go back to, to older cars and I think that's just gonna be uh, the case more and more as, as we go into you know autonomous driving and all that stuff. We're going over pretty rough roads here. Still feels totally fine. Uh, I think this has been, has this been lowered, this 7 Series? Uh, it sits 
also on Dylan uh, Abox Springs. Or, okay. Uh, Bill Stain B6 HD uh, struts. So it's so it's yeah, it is like an inch or so lower, I think. Yeah. Not I mean, not not much. It's probably about the standard height of uh, M Sport suspension, but it's a little bit more stiffer. Okay. It feels uh, stock the suspension when it comes to ride quality of it. I didn't want to put coilovers and make it too. Yeah. Too harsh. No, it makes sense. You don't want that in a 7 series, maybe in a 3 series, sure. One thing about these uh, BMWs of the time that always <laughs> annoyed me is the MPG, uh, the fuel uh, economy gauge or whatever it is, because as soon as you step on the gas, it goes up to like 8 miles per gallon. And it's so like annoying to see that they had it in the old E46 uh, 3 series as well. And it's just uh, part of this era of BMWs. I bought it with 100,000 miles even, and the majority of the 14,000, 16,000 miles I drove through, through the course of that my ownership since 2015 was. Uh, I, I loved taking this out like on long trips. Like, I, yeah, I would, that I would drive it to Texas. Or yes, Chicago. that that I would. That, that's what it's built for. That's what you want to do in a, you know, a luxury GT sedan like this. I was driving to Nebraska. Oh. Like crossing the highway in the midnight, and it caused the damage. The real, like it, it, the only parts I bought back then for it were like four eight hundred dollars. Was that the time you decided to change the entire front bumper? Yeah. Or? And I, 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 I had a front bumper, and I was like, oh, maybe I should like do just a, something special something with it. Special, you know. And I had that like lip laying, uh, laying around, and, but it was because it was aftermarket; it wasn't fitting very well. So I had to mold it into the bumper and then I was like, maybe I should, I should yeah. change like fog lights. <laughs> and then I bought no CTs, those like the E46. 46, like uh, covers. It fits the car, it looks good. And I was like, oh, yeah, that, 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 I think that the fog lights looks good. I think you yeah, can, I think. It's different, you know. Yeah, but in that era, the front ends, the E39, the E46 and this E38, they all look pretty much the same. So, yeah, they, so you know, like the, goes well yeah. It's not, it's not too old. I had like a, Mixed feeling about the rear bumper, but like when I when I decided to put uh, exhaust on it, mm -hmm. I, and I, we, we cut the cut the openings in the bumper cover. Everybody does that, like they cut the openings in the bumper, but it, it doesn't look right when, when it came. No, it needs to be a yeah. smooth yeah. end because point. You, you know the E30, E38 rear bumper is just like smooth straight. Yeah, yeah. Anything. There's no exhaust pipes on. Exhaust. We had so like uh, at the shop we had a. Uh, a car which was a Subaru, with, uh, which was a little re rated but they rep replaced the bumper, and uh, this was left off of it. And I was like, oh, that, that kind of looks really good. Oh, cool. Why not? Yeah. Put it on. Until the dog did it fit the uh, curvature of the bumper. Okay. I just widened it like three inches. It worked out pretty good. That, and that, that bumper was uh, is there for more than five years now and have no crocs. It goes well with the exhaust. Yeah, it would be pretty weird if you just did one end of the, uh, you know, I, if you just did the front end sporty and then left the rear end stock. I'm having a great time because this is one of my personal dream cars, the E38, and driving it. It's like you're meeting your heroes. You don't know what to expect really, but this is uh, absolutely fantastic. Just listen to those pipes. It has a cold air intake, uh, mass airflow sensor, throttle body intake manifold. That's w that was offered for E39. Uh, I mean E38. Mm. And uh, this was uh, retrofitted from E39. It goes curved, uh, curves up because uh, on E39 this is this uh, tower tower uh, tower sits lower. So we had to put this under the press and stra uh, straighten up you know, okay. in order to clear. The Cold air intake, math, throttle body intake manifold, uh, engine software and transmission software, also Dynan. Um, Dynan Champion wheels. This is actually the, uh, our re uh, rear spec. This is E60 e spec. Um, 19 by 9, I believe, and 19 by 10 in the back. 255 width in the front. Yeah, and um, a lot of people put E46 spec, but they're not uh, very good very good looking and if you if you notice there's no spacers i like the wheels they look clean yeah. they kind of suit the e39 uh, e38 to have uh, simple wheels like this interior when I bought it. so i had to buy another car with black interior and we swapped the whole thing and we did the headlining and suede 
And uh, the biggest part I'm proud of is the factory trim. There is no no single crack in there. <laughs> it looks beautiful. Yeah, it's the first uh, car with a built-in TV in it, the E38, yeah. and built-in navigation. Uh, this is like uh, uh, obviously uh, aftermarket sun. It is hooked to a, a BMW TV tuner in the back. Uh, as you can see, there is also a, a rear strut tower brace, mm -hmm. also from E39. It's actually almost a direct fit to E38. Okay. It, it, it needed very minimal uh, modifications too. Because of the width of the 7 Series? Yeah. It's a little bit wider? Uh, no, not really. Really? In there, it was actually the exact same width. Interesting. Yeah. I was surprised. I thought I would, I would need to do more uh, work to the brace to, to make it fit, but it, it was very easy. And the uh, Dynan exhaust also from E60 M5. Uh, Beefy, that's uh, yeah, proper bazooka tailpipes right there. Yeah, because the, uh, and initially Tyna never offered uh, like a quad exhaust for E38. Um, this is actually my uh, own made bumper cover. Like okay. Bumper, it's not slow, but, but this, the this well diffuser is, part? Yeah, it's off of a Subaru. Of course, the Dynan badge. I think I heard somewhere that you need to have a specific uh, number of Dynan yeah, parts is, uh, to I have the badge on it. I submitted a <laughs> list of uh, Dynan parts I have and they just ship mailed me a Dynan yeah. badge for free. That's pretty cool that they have that standard. So I have a cold, uh, cold package, so, which is have uh, heated seats, the front and rear. Also have a convenience, I think, which offers this shade. Uh, the curtains, yeah. The paint looks great too. I did mod modify the front bumper as well. It has uh, aftermarket uh, sne uh, AC Schnitzer uh, lip molded in, and this is actually a E46 M M3 fog lights. Oh yeah, I can see it now. Let's see it. Definitely stands out, specifically in the red. Rarely see red E38s. There, there's, uh, I believe, like uh, around 500 units in this color. Again, big thanks to Max and Andre for letting me review this car today. Give them a follow on Instagram at m underscore town underscore Colorado. I'll see you in the next video.